and my information is in the bulletin. Please um, contact me if you're in need of anything this week. Um, it's so good to see everyone today. And we have several announcements. The first, we want to make certain that everyone is aware that services for Pat Cooch will be held today at Carolina Memorial Gardens on Rivers. The visitation is at 2 o'clock and the services will be at 3. Pat was a longtime member of our church. Beth now has some updates on Hands of Christ. Church, 
and I welcome visitors and members alike and um, hope you feel sufficiently welcomed and loved and will return as often as you can. Let us now turn to the worship of God. Please stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship printed in the bulletin. From near and far we gather. Here we are no longer strangers. In the body of Christ, we are one. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. We are like sheep without a shepherd, reaching out for healing and grace. Teach us by your spirit of wisdom and feed us through your holy word so that the weary may find rest, the stranger may find welcome, and the sick may be made whole. Through Jesus Christ, our peace. Amen. Let's join our voices now singing God is Here, number 409. Thank you.
will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Let us pray together, first silently and then corporately, the prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. Sure. 
water. And they were over there to meet the boat when it came in. So again, the disciples are going to get all interrupted and the people are going to want Jesus to heal. And you know what? Jesus did. Because maybe the retreat away to rest was just the time in the boat, right? Because all those people needed some help on the other side. So I want you to remember this big word, compassion. Jesus had compassion on all those people. And he would stop what he was doing and take care of whatever it was that they needed. So do you think this week you could show some compassion? Can you show compassion maybe? If you see somebody drop something, maybe you can pick it up for them. Or how else can we show compassion? How can we be helpful? How? How about that? And your mom's in the wheelchair, and you, he helps her get her water. That's a very compassionate thing to do. And to do things before you're even asked. You know, just say, may I get you some water right now? Or may I pick up this for you? Or whatever. Okay? So let's have our prayer together. You listen for the word I read later if you don't go to the nursery. Ready? Good morning, God. Good morning, God. This is your day. This is your day. I am your child. I am your child. Show me your way. Show me your way. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. Good morning, your love. Just one, not one handful. Okay, I'll let you have one. Okay. <laughs> Technically, it was right, one handful. Okay. Okay, thank you, boys and girls.
Our Old Testament lesson this morning is very, very familiar to all of us. We hear it often at funerals and memorial services. And we probably learned it in the King James Version as a child. So I ask us all now to say together the 23rd Psalm from the King James Version. Join with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table for the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And our New Testament lesson, and please stand if you are able for the reading of the Gospel this morning, comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34, and 53 through 56. Listen now for the word of the Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever, wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. Let us pray. O oh, Father God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The title of my sermon this morning is no rest for the weary. And starting in 6, we just skipped right over the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus walking on the water. What? Aren't those very important? Well, we'll visit them next week, I promise. So, no rest for the weary. I'm going to begin with a poem that is anonymous as far as I did the research on, so forgive me if, if you find out later it's not anonymous. Let me know who did write this. But I thought it was uh, really spoke to our scripture this morning. <clears throat> Here it goes. <clears throat> I knelt to pray, but not for long. I had too much to do. I had to hurry and get to work, for bills would soon be due. So I knelt and said a hurried prayer and jumped up off my knees. My Christian duty was now done. My soul could rest at ease. All day long I had no time to spread a word of cheer. No time to speak of Christ to friends. They'd laugh at me, I fear. No time, no time, too much to do. That was my constant cry. No time to give to those in need, but at last, at last, the time to die. I went before the Lord, I came. I stood with downcast eyes, for in his hands God held a book. It was the book of life. God looked into his book and said, Your name I cannot find. I once was going to write it down, but I never found the time. We do live in a very busy time and in a very busy world. 
We have more access to time-saving devices than any other generation before us in our homes and in our places of work and school. It looks like we would have more time to do the things we like and more time to spend with our families or volunteer more time in charity at church. We hear talk every day about the speed with which time is passing. Even my young adult children are saying this. We're all constantly checking our watches or cell phones if you no longer wear a watch. How often do you hear, oh my, how time flies? Comments on Facebook when someone posts pictures of their children or their grandchildren, usually comments will say something like, my, they're growing up so quickly. It seems to me like we just put away Christmas decorations and we're already in the second half of the new year. I've just gotten used to writing 2021 instead of 2020, and it won't be long before we see the decoration, Christmas decorations come out of the boxes again, and that we have to start learning to write 2022. Keeping up with time is something we all wrestle with every day, even after we retire. We pack our days so full that at the end of it, we realize we haven't accomplished everything we set out to do, or at least half of our to-do list gets carried over to the next day. Experts say that actually we're trying to do more in one day that used to be done a long time ago in three days. You think you're busy. Think about Jesus and those disciples. They were constantly on the move, and people were constantly pulling at them and wanting something from them. We're told in verse 33 this morning that there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and the disciples didn't even have time to eat. Look at verses 31 and 32 where Jesus said to his disciples, Come apart into a deserted place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure as much as to eat. They went away in the boat, thinking they were going to a deserted place by themselves. It didn't happen, did it? Time out is often needed. Look at many of the sports we watch and how often the coaches call for timeouts. Perhaps the players are looking exhausted to the coach, or they may need a short break, or perhaps the coach just needs to give them a new, stra a different, a new strategy to try. Time out is a wise principle for all of us in our everyday living. In C.S. Lewis's screw tape letters, the devil, fictional author, tells his demons to keep them busy so they won't have time for God. Here I go again, another acronym for you, seeing as you already know how much I love them. Busy, B-U-S-Y, buried under Satan's yoke. We need to take time out, we need to slow down, and we need to listen to our life master coach, Jesus. We need time to reflect on how we're doing at life from the Christian point of view, not the world's point of view. How might we do things differently and be more Christ-like in our relationships? Are we putting Jesus first, then others before ourselves? Or are our own selfish desires getting the upper hand in our lives? Not very far up the road from here in Monk's Corner is a wonderful monastery called Metkin Abbey. Many of you may have been to their crush exhibit held every November, but have you ever gone by yourself just to spend time with God? To recharge your batteries, to feel his presence, to seek his counsel. And why is it that we often feel so guilty when we want to stop for a while and have a bit of downtime or me time? It's hurry, hurry, hurry. Even our young children feel the hurried pace of our lives. And there are so many children today being treated for ulcers from worry and stress, 
often caused by the hurried and involved lives they see us living and are forcing them to live. After school homework, extra reading requirements, sports, dance, gymnastics, swimming, hurry, 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 or we're gonna be late. Jesus didn't feel guilty about taking time out. Why should we? He encouraged his disciples to do the same. They were human. They had the hectic, fast-paced life, and there was a sense of urgency to get as much done as possible, even to them. But after the disciples came back from a strenuous mission, Jesus said, let's go away for a quiet, quiet time and rest. We all have days when we need that kind of invitation, don't we? Sometimes, when overwhelmed, we need to take a sick day, or what I used to call my mental health day, to regroup and find energy to keep going. Sometimes people will tell folks in the hospital, God had to put you here to slow you down a bit. No one can keep up a hairy pace under constant pressure from all directions too long without it taking a toll on their health. Retreats are good things. They help renew and refresh us to continue what needs to be done. A Sabbath rest. Jesus commands us to do this. In the first chapter of Mark's Gospel, we were told that Jesus, early in the morning while it was still dark, rose up and went out and departed into a deserted place and prayed there. When Jesus was about to be arrested, he walked to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples he went to a lonely spot and prayed. Jesus was never too busy with everything he had going on in his life to take time out with his heavenly Father and pray. Of course, we all know we can pray anywhere, anytime, but we can talk a lot more with God apart from the noise of a crowd. And we can focus only on talking to him and listening without interruption. He genuinely cares what is on our hearts and minds. And even though he knows it before we speak it, he still loves to hear his children talk to him. As parents, I know we all have asked our children how their day went or what they did today at school. And God is the same way with us. He just cherishes time with us and us telling him what's on our hearts. God laid out rest time for us from the beginning of creation. Even in the Ten Commandments, he laid down the principle of rest. You have six days in which to do your work, but the seventh day is to be a day of rest dedicated to me. <coughs> he knew we would need rest before we did. Not only do we fill every minute of every day the work week with work, driving all over creation, shuttling children here and there, or a neighbor or a family member who needs help, but we even do it on the Sabbath. I remember when my son was in kindergarten and the teacher asked the children what their dads did. My son's answer was, go to meetings, because every time he called his dad's office to talk to him, the secretary always said, he's in a meeting, or at least that was the impression my son remembered. We need to intentionally take time out every day to spend time collecting our thoughts and to think about life, where we are going, and also to think about our relationship with God. We can't serve God very well if we're always tired, stressed out, and on edge, and where the least little thing can set us off. You don't feel much like praising or worshiping God in this state, do you? We need to change our pace of living. We need to learn to leave margin in our lives. We need a balance of work, play, and worship. We need to back off from the frenetic pace we live and spend more time with our maker. It is said that we are always taller when we're on our knees. The most important work we have to do is the work we must do on our knees alone with God, away from the racket of the world and all the noise that goes with it. Taking time out with God in the midst of your work 
is a prerequisite to all work for the simple reason that it is by prayer that we couple the powers of heaven to our helplessness. We tap into the power which can make the impossible possible, the power to move mountains in our lives. One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible is a short one, Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. Tell God what is on your heart, and then be still and quiet and listen for him to speak to you. If you meditate on his word and sit quietly with a section of scripture, he may speak to you through that very passage. Nobody should be too busy for that. The opposition is strong and it's easy to get caught up in so many things that taking time out seems impossible to fit in. Jesus was a busy man, but he realized that if he was going to keep his ministry in proper perspective and have the strength he needed to carry it out, that if he was going to defeat Satan and sin, he needed to frequently be in touch with his Heavenly Father. I believe it is one of the sins of our age to keep such a frenetic pace and frenzied life, and that's why God needed to send Jesus to be our Savior, to save us from ourselves. This is why he feeds us his body and his blood and assures us again and again that we are forgiven even for the wasted hours that we don't spend with him. I'm going to date myself here. A singer and a songwriter by the name of Harry Chapin had a song back in the 70s, I believe. It was called Cats in the Cradle. Ever heard of it? A few heads nodding. Here are the lyrics. I wish I could sing. <laughs> My child arrived the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away. And he was talking before I knew it. And as he grew, he'd say, I'm going to be like you, Dad. You know I'm going to be like you. And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. The little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you coming home, Dad? I don't know when. But we'll get together then, son. You know we'll get have a good time then. My son turned 10 just the other day. He said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's play. Can you teach me the throw? I said, not today, I got a lot to do. He said, that's okay. And he walked away, but his smile never dimmed. It said, I'm gonna be like him someday. Yeah, I'm gonna be like him. You know I'm gonna be like him. Well, he came from college just the other day. So much like a man, I just had to say, son, I'm proud of you, can you sit for a while? He shook his head and then he said with a smile, what I'd really like, Dad, is to borrow the keys. See you later. Can I have them, please? I've long since retired. My son's moved away. I called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. He said, I'd love to, Dad, if I could find the time. You see, my new job's a hassle and the kids have the flu. But it's sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's sure been nice talking to you. And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me, he'd grown up to be just like me. My boy was just like me. Jesus knows how stressed we can become and how we can get all of our priorities upside down. He was well aware that our frenzied lives would take their toll on our health, our families, and our closeness to God. Not to mention the bad example we are giving to the younger generations when we hardly have time to spend with those who matter to us most. Our family, our friends, and our Savior. Let this word from God today be a catalyst to get you thinking about where your life is taking you. Take time out with Him and be refreshed by your Heavenly Father who loves you so dearly and wants to spend time with you. Amen? Amen. Let us stand together and sing how Hymn number 169.
And now with gladness of our hearts, let us present the offering of our life and our labor to our Lord.
then the juice will be on either side of me. So just step aside, take your juice, drink it, and there are um, buckets here for you to dispose of your empty cups. Friends, this is a joyful feast for the people of God. They will come from east and west, from north and south, and they will sit at the table of our Lord in the kingdom of heaven. This is not Yaman Park Presbyterian Church table. This is not the Presbyterian denomination table. This is the Lord's table, and he invites all who put their faith in him to partake. So all are invited, and let us pray. God of our hopes and dreams, we are empty, and we long to be filled. We are hungry, and we long to be fed. We're lost, and we long to be found. Invite us once more to eat our fill and to find our true nourishment in Jesus, the bread of heaven, in whose name we pray. Amen. On the night of his betrayal and arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, broken for you. He gave it to his disciples, and we are his disciples today. He said, take and eat, and when you do, remember me until I come again. And in the same way after supper, he took the cup, and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, and shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you declare the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please come forward as you are led.
over us and over these earthly gifts we have shared, that they may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ and that we may become one in him. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in truth and love, and faithful in the breaking of the bread. Then at last, all people will be free, all divisions healed, and with your whole creation, we will sing your praise through Jesus Christ, our Son. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, as the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever, Almighty Father. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you call us by name and you beckon each of us to follow you. May we do so through your grace. Like a shepherd tending the flock, you tend to our needs. Be present this day with those who struggle, who suffer, those who are in pain or in sorrow. Guide those who are lost or filled with worry and fear. Protect those who are in harm's way. Heal those who are ill. Mend those who are broken in spirit as only your love can. God of peace, watch over those who lead us in our various governments and churches. Fill our leaders with wisdom, patience, insight, and mercy. Help them to lead with kindness and with strength. God of love, fill our hearts with the knowledge of you that we can turn from the distractions and busyness of life and be more like you and more with you. May we be agents of your compassion, offering kindness to those we meet this day. God of all blessings, we thank you for all the gifts of life. For your Son, our Savior, and our Great Shepherd, the one who stands at the gate of all life's challenges and joys, calling uh, to us in love. And now we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. Our closing response is hymn number 740, Sorry for the Misprint in the Bulletin. And also, as you leave, remember to stop in the fellowship hall for ice cream. Thank you.